Dark Night of the Soul. By St. John the Cross. Book 2. Chapter 10. Explains this purgation thoroughly by means of a comparison. 1. For the sake of further clarity in this matter, we ought to note that this purgative and loving knowledge, or divine light we are speaking of, has the same effect on a soul that fire has on a log of wood. The soul is purged and prepared for union with the divine light, just as the wood is prepared for transformation into the fire. Fire, when applied to wood, first dehumidifies it, dispelling all moisture and making it give off any water it contains. Then it gradually turns the wood black, makes it dark and ugly, and even causes it to emit a bad odor. By drying out the wood, the fire brings to light and expels all those ugly and dark accidents, that are contrary to fire. Finally, by heating and enkindling it from without, the fire transforms the wood into itself, and makes it as beautiful as it is itself. Once transformed, the wood no longer has any activity or passivity of its own, except for its weight and its quantity that is denser than the fire. It possesses the properties and performs the actions of fire. It is dry and it dries, it is hot and it gives off heat, it is brilliant and it illumines, it is also much lighter in weight than before. It is the fire that produces all these properties in the wood. 2. Similarly, we should philosophize about this divine, loving fire of contemplation. Before transforming the soul, it purges it of all contrary qualities. It produces blackness and darkness and brings to the fore the soul's ugliness, thus one seems worse than before and unsightly and abominable. This divine purge, stirs up all the foul and vicious humors of which the soul was never before aware, never did it realize there was so much evil in itself, since these humors were so deeply rooted. And now that they may be expelled and annihilated they are brought to light and seen clearly through the illumination of this dark light of divine contemplation. Although the soul is no worse than before, either in itself or in its relationship with God, it feels clearly that it is so bad as to be not only unworthy that God see it but deserving of his abhorrence. In fact, it feels that God now does abhor it. This comparison illustrates many of the things we have been saying and will say. 3. First, we can understand that the very loving light and wisdom into which the soul will be transformed, is what in the beginning purges and prepares it just as the fire that transforms the wood by incorporating it into itself, is what first prepares it for this transformation. 4. Second, we discern that the experience of these sufferings does not derive from this wisdom. For as the wise man says, all good things come to the soul together with her, but from the soul's own weakness and imperfection. Without this purgation it cannot receive the divine light, sweetness, and delight of wisdom just as the log of wood until prepared cannot be transformed by the fire that is applied to it. And this is why the soul suffers so intensely. Ecclesiasticus confirms our assertion by telling what he suffered, in order to be united with wisdom and enjoy it, my soul wrestled for her, and my entrails were disturbed in acquiring her, therefore, shall I possess a good possession, Ecclus 51 25, 29. 5. Third, we can infer the manner in which souls suffer in purgatory. The fire, when applied, would be powerless over them, if they did not have imperfections from which to suffer. These imperfections are the fuel that catches on fire, and once they are gone, there is nothing left to burn. So it is here on earth, when the imperfections are gone, the soul suffering terminates, and joy remains. 6. Fourth, we deduce that as the soul is purged and purified by this fire of love, it is further enkindled in love, just as the wood becomes hotter as the fire prepares it. Individuals, however, do not always feel this enkindling of love. But sometimes the contemplation shines less forcibly, so they may have the opportunity to observe and even rejoice over the work being achieved, for then, these good effects are revealed. It is as though one were to stop work, and take the iron out of the forge to observe what is being accomplished. Thus the soul is able to perceive the good it was unaware of, while the work was proceeding. So too, when the flame stops acting upon the wood, there is a chance to see how much the wood has been enkindled by it. 7. Fifth, we can also gather from this comparison why, as we mentioned earlier, after this alleviation, the soul suffers again, more intensely and inwardly than before. After that manifestation and after a more exterior purification of imperfections, the fire of love returns to act more interiorly, on the consumable matter of which the soul must be purified. The suffering of the soul becomes more intimate, subtle, and spiritual in proportion to the inwardness, subtlety, spirituality, and deep-rootedness of the imperfections that are removed. This more interior purgation, resembles the action of fire on wood, as the fire penetrates more deeply into the wood, 
its action becomes stronger and more vehement, preparing the innermost part, in order to gain possession of it. 8. Sixth, we discover the reason it seems to the soul that all blessings are past and it is full of evil. At this time, it is conscious of nothing but its own bitterness, just as in the example of the wood, for neither the air, nor anything else gives it more than a consuming fire. Yet, when other manifestations, like the previous ones are made, the soul's joy, will be more interior because of the more intimate purification. 9. Seventh, we deduce that when a purification is soon to return, even though the soul's joy is ample during these intervals, so much so that it sometimes seems, as we pointed out, that the bitterness will never recur, there is a feeling, if one adverts, and sometimes one cannot help adverting, that some root remains. And this advertence does not allow complete joy, for it seems that the purification is threatening to assail the soul again. And when the soul does have this feeling, the purification soon returns. Finally, that more inward part still to be purged, and illumined cannot be completely concealed by the portion already purified, just as there is a very perceptible difference between the inmost part of the wood still to be illumined and that which is already purged. When this purification returns to attack more interiorly, it is no wonder that once again, the soul thinks all its good has come to an end, and its blessings are over. Placed in these more interior sufferings, it is blinded as to all exterior good. 10. With this example in mind, as well as the explanation of verse 1 of the first stanza concerning this dark night, and its terrible properties, it will be a good thing to leave these sad experiences, and begin now to discuss the fruit of the soul's tears, and the happy traits about which it begins to sing in this second verse. Fired with love's urgent longings. Next, Book 2, Chapter 11. Thanks.